Hi, I'm Jason and this is Brighton on the south coast of England. It's a fantastic seaside resort. And here's my friend Lizzie. Thanks, Jason. Hi, I'm Lizzie. This is Cardiff. Cardiff is the capital of Wales. The UK, the United Kingdom, is four countries. England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. That's Brighton on the south coast of England. And this is Cardiff. Here in Wales, there are three million people. There are 50 million people living in England and five million in Scotland. There are one and a half million people in Northern Ireland. My name is Lizzie and I'm from London in England. My name's Sarah and I'm from Derry in Northern Ireland. Hi, I'm Yvette and I come from Edinburgh. My family live here in Brighton. Here they are, my mum, dad and my big sister Kelly. She's at university. My family live in Wales. Look, that's my mum and that's my dad. The boys are my little brothers and they're my grandparents. There are people from many different countries in the UK today. Lots of people are from Europe, Asia, Africa and the Caribbean. I'm Mike, and I live in New York City. Here, it's busy 24 hours a day. There are people from all over the world in New York and in the USA. I love it here. Hi, my name's Jennifer, and I live on a farm in Ohio. Ohio is a state in the USA. There are 50 states in the USA. There are more than 218 million people in the USA. Washington, D.C. is the capital. The White House in Washington is where the president lives and works. This is my friend Joe. Oh, hi. Okay. This is how you play. Yeah, just play. Okay. This is my lucky day. Our farm is 20 miles from the town. There are a lot of animals on the farm. This is Ella. We both love horses. Life's quiet here in the country. It's too quiet. Come on, let's ride. My name is Jesse, and I live in Long Island, New York. Hi, I'm Josh, and I'm from Texas. Hi, I'm Kelly, and I'm from Miami. My name is Chris DeCunto, and I'm from Colchester, Connecticut. That's us. Now you know who we are and where we're from. So, goodbye from the USA. And goodbye from the UK, too. Bye. I'm Lizzie. Today I'm in London. I love it here. There are so many interesting places to see.
I like the museums. I really like the shops in London. Favourite attraction in London is Tower Bridge. I like the shops, the restaurants and the theatres in London. My friend Lauren is here on holiday from the USA, so we can see the sights of London together. And the perfect way to do that is to go on a boat down the river. I've got my guidebook and map, so why don't you come with us on a trip down the River Thames? That's Big Ben, isn't it? Yes. The Houses of Parliament are behind it. That's where the British government meets. Some parts of the building are very old, from the 11th century. The boat's starting. Let's go to the front. The Thames divides London in half north and south. There are 30 bridges across it. That's amazing. What is it? It's the London Eye. It's fantastic, isn't it? It's 135 metres high and from the top you can see for 40 kilometres. It moves very slowly so you can really enjoy the view. That's the South Bank. It's an art centre. You can go to the theatre there or to the cinema. Where are we on the map? We're here. That's the Millennium Bridge. It's very modern and simple. Do you see that building there? That's the Globe Theatre. It's a modern copy of Shakespeare's original theatre. They put on plays there, mainly Shakespeare, of course. I'd like to see a play there. Now, this place is quite scary. It's the Tower of London. It's over 900 years old. It was a prison. Many famous people died here, including Anne Boleyn, one of the wives of King Henry VIII. It's a museum now. That's where the crown jewels are, isn't it? Yes, that's right. The largest diamond in the world is there, the Star of Africa. But look, here's Tower Bridge. Do you recognize it? Oh yes, it's really famous. It opens for tall ships. Sometimes in summer, the bridge opens 50 times a week. That really tall building over there is Canary Wharf. It's a centre for business. There's so much to see. London is incredible. Phew, I'm really tired. Well, that's perfect. The boat turns round here and goes back to Westminster. We can sit down now. Thanks for telling me all that stuff. Now, about tomorrow. Can we take this trip again? <laughs> your favourite sporting event? Is it World Cup football, motor racing, the World Series baseball, or do you like sports which are hot? Skateboarding, inline skating and BMX biking are all hot street sports. Today we're in Chichester near London to see some hot street sports in action.
as you can see, these street sports are fast, exciting and sometimes quite dangerous. I'm with George and Sam. They like to come here to skate. George, why do you like inline skating? Well, it's fast, exciting and you can do it anywhere. What about clothes? Is style important in skating clothes? Yes, definitely. You need to look cool and be able to move freely. Thanks for talking to us today. Now, let's see George and Sam in action. The most popular sport in the UK is football. Most boys play football at school. Every weekend, thousands of young people play football in parks. My favourite sport is football and my favourite team is Arsenal. I like watching football. At the weekend, I play football at the park. My favourite sport is football and my favourite team is Manchester United. Other sports which are popular with boys are rugby and cricket. So that's the boys. A lot of girls play football too. But what other sports do girls usually play? British girls play hockey and netball. And they swim. That's fantastic, Alex. Well done, Alex. Do you train every day? Yes, I do. I come to the sports centre every day and swim for about two hours. And what's your ambition for the future? I want to train in the USA and then win a big race there. Thanks, Alex, and good luck. OK, let's see how they do it in the USA. Thanks, Lizzie. Here in the USA, there are some of the greatest sports personalities in the world. And we have many great sports teams too. The most popular team sport in the USA is basketball. 11 million young people play basketball regularly. And teams like the Harlem Globetrotters are famous all over the world. American football and baseball are also big here in the States. But the big surprise is that soccer is now one of the hottest team sports around. American baseball is very exciting to watch. On a Saturday afternoon, friends and family often go together to watch a baseball game. It's a tradition. The teams have great names like the Boston Red Sox. America is also famous for its football. Watch this. So why don't footballers ever get hurt? They wear lots of padding, that's why. They wear shoulder pads, knee pads, and a helmet. Almost half of all high school athletes are now female. Basketball and soccer 
are very popular with girls. And me, I'm not good at sports. But there is one thing I can do. I could be a cheerleader. See you. Today we're planning a special feature on teenage fashion. Anna and Justin are two typical teenagers who want to change their image. So we're going to introduce them to our fashion expert, Kate, and see how she can help. First, let's meet Kate. Hi, Kate. Hi, Jason. What are you planning for Anna and Justin? Well, Anna and Justin say that they always choose the same sort of clothes. They're bored with the way they look. Everyone feels like that at some time, and it's very difficult to change. So you're going to suggest some new ideas and different styles? Yes, and some exciting colours. Great. Perhaps I can get some good tips myself. Well, Anna and Justin are waiting for us in the studio. Let's go. Hi Anna, hi Justin. What do you think of the clothes? They're great. I never get the chance to try on clothes like these. Well, I'm not sure. I usually just go to the same shops and buy a new pair of the same jeans. Justin never takes a risk with his clothes. I often tell him to buy something new, but he doesn't want to. Well, I don't want to buy something and then hate it when I get home. Which is the reason we're here, to try some new ideas. Now. Justin, what's your favourite colour? Black. Then everything matches everything else. Yes, I can see that. Now, why don't you try this with these? Red and yellow. Just try it, Justin. And what about these as well? And Anna, why don't you try this pink vintage top with this denim skirt. OK, thanks. I didn't know there were so many different styles of jeans. Look at these. Aren't there any normal jeans for guys? Why don't you try these? Hmm, perhaps later. Oh look, they're ready. OK, I want to take some snaps. Give me some good poses. A yellow sports top and beige jeans. A pink vintage top and a denim skirt. A classic white suit. A long grey jacket and trousers. You look great, Justin. I like the yellow sports top. What do you think? Well, I'm not sure. Now we need some accessories. Some scarves, belts and jewellery. And I know just where to get them. And I'm going to ask some people about their favourite clothes. I like to be comfortable. I don't always follow the trends, but I like to, I, I like to look nice. Just casual, jeans and t-shirts mostly. I like to wear a mixture of different styles. I like the gypsy look, which is a baggy top and a nice flared skirt. I don't really follow what everybody else wears, I just wear what I want to wear. My favourite look at the moment is a kind of hippie look with the baggy clothes and earrings. Magazines, TV and pop stars influence me. I 
I like wearing shirts and tight trousers. Street markets are great places to find bargains, especially accessories like scarves and belts. Why pay high prices for designer scarves when you can get something like this for half the price? Aren't these earrings lovely? And look at this beautiful silver necklace. These little bags are great. I love this pink one. OK, I think I've got enough now. Let's go back to the studio. A black skirt and a floral top. That black skirt really suits you. Baggy jeans and a hoodie top. Great street clothing. A gypsy skirt and a purple top. You look so glamorous. You don't look like you at all. You look good in this skater gear, Justin. Yeah, I quite like the purple shirt too. What do you think of the vintage clothes, Anna? I love them. I feel so much more confident about wearing pretty and colourful clothes. It's good to try something new from time to time. Do you think you would change the way you dress in the future? Definitely. I can't wait to buy some new clothes. Justin, how do you feel about changing your style? Great. I still like black, though. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner with the family is very important for many people. This is Jeanette's house. Her family are American, but they live here in England. Jeanette and her mother are preparing the food for tonight's meal. So what are you cooking tonight? Well, it's my turn to cook dinner with Mum. We're going to have baked salmon, vegetables and boiled potatoes. I love vegetables. Which ones are you using? I'm going to steam some broccoli carrots and beans. I also want to roast some mushrooms and red peppers. Sounds great. What about dessert? For dessert, we're going to have pancakes. They're my favorite. They're also American. My mom's going to start on the salmon while I make the pancakes. Jeanette says that pancakes are easy to make and they're delicious. First, take four ounces of flour. Make a hole in the center of the flour. Add two eggs, some milk, a tiny bit of salt. Now mix the ingredients. Put a little oil in a frying pan. have maple syrup with my pancakes. In the UK, people eat less meat now than in the past. Jeanette is vegetarian and doesn't eat meat anymore. But the rest of her family do. But we don't eat healthy food all of the time. Fast food is tasty, cheap and easy. In the USA and the UK, burger bars, pizza places and fried chicken restaurants are great for people who want food on the move. But there are some differences between the two countries. Fish and chip shops are still very popular in the UK and there are still many small cafes which serve a traditional English breakfast all day. That is bacon and eggs, sausages, baked beans and fried bread. The American version of the English cafe is the diner 
isn't it, Jeanette? It sure is. I miss those huge meals. They serve similar types of food, but the main difference is the amount of food that you get. In American diners, the food portions are generally much bigger than in the UK. There are also many places serving fresh and healthy fast food. Here you get a really big sandwich full of good things. Great for lunch. What do you have for lunch, Jeanette? I normally have a sandwich at about one o'clock. But your main meal is in the evening? Yes, at around eight o'clock. What do other people eat and when do they eat it? My favourite breakfast is chocolate croissant. For breakfast, I usually have a glass of orange juice and some toast. For breakfast, I either have a bowl of cereal with orange juice or I have a breakfast milkshake. I usually eat breakfast at about half past seven. Generally for breakfast, I eat a bagel or toast or cereal, something like that. I don't eat breakfast because I don't like breakfast foods. I normally eat a sandwich for lunch, maybe chicken. For lunch, I have a cheeseburger and a soda. I normally eat lunch at about 1 p.m. My favorite dinner is when I make spaghetti. I normally eat dinner around 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the evening. I like shepherd's pie for dinner. In the UK, restaurants which serve food from places like India, China and Thailand are very popular. But the most popular restaurant food in the UK, especially with teenagers, is an Indian curry. There are more Indian restaurants in London than there are in New Delhi in India. Do you always cook a big meal in the evenings? Well, sometimes we just have snacks in front of the TV. They're easy. You can put them in the oven or microwave. How long will the food be? It's ready. Let's sit down. Mmm. That looks delicious. Mmm. The salmon's perfect. I love the vegetables, especially the roast peppers. Well done, everyone. I'd say it's a complete success. Now, who's doing the dishes? You, you are. are. <laughs> The very best thing about school is hanging out with your friends and just getting to know everyone on a personal basis. My favourite subject is biology. My favourite subject is maths because I'm quite good at it. I really like design and technology. My favourite subjects are maths and business studies. My favourite subject is English. Hi, my name's Jennifer, and I go to Athens High School in Ohio in the USA. I'm here today with Jessica, who is visiting from the UK. I'm going to show her around my school. Welcome to Athens, Jessica. Thank you. Okay, classes start at 7.30. We've got 10 minutes. Let's get a drink before we look around. It's a big place. How many students go to this school? There are about 1,200. It's quite a big school. Time for class. Come and have a look at the computer labs. You've got some really cool stuff here. Yeah. The school just upgraded all the computers. What subjects do you study here? Well, we do the usual things. Math, English, science, languages, geography, history, art, social studies, economics. The same as in the UK, I guess. Well, we do most of those subjects, but not economics. 
We don't usually study that until we go to university. My favourite subject in school is science. My favourite subject is maths. My favourite subjects in school are English and history. My favourite subject is English. Uh, when I leave school, I'd like to go to university to study law. When I leave school, I'd like to be a doctor. So how many lessons do you have a day? Seven or eight. Each class lasts 40 minutes. There's no break between classes until lunch. Wow, that's a long morning. In the UK, we have two lessons and then a break. When does school finish? About 2.30. Then we do sports or other activities, like music practice or drama. We finish later, about 3.30. Some people go home to do homework, but others stay on to do sports, like football, athletics, and swimming. Here we can do tennis, basketball, football, you know, American football. There's always something going on. Here are the science labs. Let's see if there are any Einsteins in there. Here's the gym. Do you want to see a volleyball game? Sure. Do you play? We don't really play volleyball in the UK. Girls play netball. Time for lunch. We can buy something in the cafeteria and you can tell me more about British schools. So this is your school. Do you all wear uniforms in Britain? Well, it all depends on the school. A lot of students wear them. Don't you wear uniforms at all here? Private schools do, but there aren't many of those. Kids don't wear uniforms in public schools. And are all schools in Britain for both boys and girls? Most are, but not all. Some people say the best exam results come from single-sex schools, but I prefer mixed. Me too. What about exams in the USA? We take them all at the end of every semester. We take 10 national exams. I've just finished mine. Let's see a few more classes before we leave. So now you've seen what I do here all day. Can I come to your school next? Of course you can. Let's go and plan the trip now. <laughs> Hi, this is New York, and I'm outside an apartment building in Manhattan. I've come to meet Natalie and Caitlin, two sisters who share a bedroom here. Many teenagers say they spend more than half their day in their bedroom. Why is this space so important? Well, let's see. This is a nice room. Who sleeps where? This is my bunk, and this is mine. But this room is really small, and she's really messy. That's not true. You're the messy one. So, do you think you spend half your lives in this room? 
No, I usually go out with friends. Well, I go out with friends too, but a lot of the time I bring my friends back here. Is that your favorite film? Yeah, I've seen it six times. What about computers? Well, we share a laptop and our mom owns a computer. Do you like living in New York? Yes, I love it. What do you like about it? Oh, I love the shops and the movies and, and the theater. Hi, come in. This is my room. What a lovely room. Do you spend a lot of your time here? Yes, I love being in my room. All my stuff's here, like my clothes. Do you have a lot of clothes? Yes, and a lot of shoes. I love buying shoes. I keep them in this closet. You're right. You do have a lot of shoes. What other favorite things do you have in this room? Well, my pictures. My mom's Scottish, so I have a lot of British heroes. But I suppose one of my favorite things are my Russian dolls. My dad brought them back from Russia with him. I don't see a computer in here. No, I don't like computers. I don't have one in my room. If I really need to, I use my dad's computer downstairs. The very best thing in my room at home is my computer. I do my homework in my room, and I read books. This is a houseboat on a river near Chelmsford in England. I'm going to meet Daniel, who lives here with his family. Hi, come in. Hi, Daniel. Tell us about your room. Yeah, my favourite place is the games area over here. My computer, two war games tables, snooker and table football. So do you spend a lot of time in here? Yes, after school, my friends come round and sometimes sleep over. It sounds great. The best thing about my room is my stereo. The best thing about my room is my bed. The best thing about my room is all my books. They are mostly science fiction and fantasy books. The best things in my room are my teddy bears and my photo albums. I like the colours of my walls in my room and the curtains. When Natalie goes away to college, it'll be nice to have my own room. But when she comes back for the holidays, she'll share the room with me. I think it would be better to have my own room, but I would miss Katie. Don't tell her, though. Today I'm here to meet my friend Joe at this internet cafe. He's American, but he lives here now in the UK. We're going to do an internet quiz, which I saw advertised on the TV. It has questions about famous places and people in the UK and the USA. Let's hope we can answer them. Hi, Joe. Hi. I bought you a drink. Okay, it's all set up. Shall we log on and get the first question? Ready when you are. Okay, let's go. Here's the first question. What is this place called? That's easy. It's the Grand Canyon in the USA. Yeah, it's in northern Arizona, in fact. And in southern Utah. Which river runs along the canyon? That's the Colorado River. Oh, here's another question. Quick! 
Who lives here? That's easy. It's Buckingham Palace. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh live there. There's the next question. Who is this footballer? Do you know that? It's David Beckham, of course. You'll have to keep up with your football, Joe, now that you live here. I'm enjoying this. We've got all the answers right so far. Oh, it's... The Statue of Liberty. But the question is, who gave the Statue of Liberty to the American people? I know that. I thought the statue was American. No. The people of France gave it to the people of America after the American Revolution. The date of American Independence Day is on the tablet in her hand. July 4th, 1776. You're right. Look, we've got six points. Great. Next question. That's Stonehenge. It's prehistoric. It was built about 4,000 years ago. People think it was a sacred site. Is that the right answer? Yes, and where is it is the next question. It's on Salisbury Plain, in Wiltshire, in England. Correct. Good, more points. Next question is... Isn't that Shakespeare? That's right. It is Shakespeare. And... He lived in Stratford-upon-Avon. Everyone knows that. I've been there with my parents. All the tourists go there. <sighs> Can we pause it? Uh, yeah, sure. There. Do you need a break? Just for a minute. It's very fast, and the next round is even faster. Okay, go. Name two of these men. Um, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Quick, hit the President's Palace button. Oh no. Which is older, Oxford University or Cambridge University? I don't know. Or let me try Oxford. Yes. How many centuries has it been a centre of learning? Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I don't know. I know it's very old. I'm going to guess six. Oh, no, it says eight. What's this? Put all these facts together and say what the place is. Okay. It's the Empire State Building. I, I think. Yes. The last question is, this building has a Chinese style interior. What is it and where is it? The Taj Mahal, Agri, India. The Royal Pavilion, Brighton, England. 
the Winter Palace, St. Petersburg, Russia. Oh, I know. It's the Royal Pavilion, Brighton, England. It's incredible inside. You'll have to come and see it with me. You're right. Brilliant. Great. Wow. We've won second prize. What have we won? Let's have a look. A trip to Stratford upon Avon. Great. We'll go together. It'll be fun. We can see a Shakespeare play. Today, I'm at Middlesex County Camp in Connecticut, USA. There are thousands of summer camps in the USA, and each one is different. Every year, young Americans come to camps like this to learn new skills, to improve old ones, to make new friends, and have fun. There are hundreds of different activities and many different types of summer camps in the USA. At this camp in Connecticut, kids can make their own schedule from many different activities. Let's hear from some of the people who go to this camp. I come to summer camp because I make the best friends here and it's completely different than anything I would be doing at home. It's a whole different world. It's a way to meet people, and I've always liked meeting people, so that's why I come to summer camp. The best thing about summer camp is that you bond with people, like your fellow peers and counselors that you meet, and you stay with them for a week or more. By that time, you're really close, almost like family. The best thing about American summer camps would be that you get to meet lots of people from around the United States, around the world, and you get to leave home for a while and experience new things um, in a different place, and you get to do a lot of fun activities. For most people, their best time is when everyone sits around the campfire and relaxes. But you do need to know how to light a campfire first. But apart from camps, where do American families go on vacation? Well, most Americans take their vacation in the USA. The most popular destination is California, with sun, surf, fantastic beaches, and beautiful people. The next favorite vacation spot in the USA is Florida. It's got wonderful weather, theme parks, great shopping, and alligators. That's right, the Everglades area of Florida is a famous alligator reserve. Of course, millions of Americans also go abroad each year. Some go to Mexico, others go to Canada. Niagara Falls is a very famous tourist attraction. Many also go to Europe. No, this isn't California. It's Cornwall in the southwest of England. Cornwall is the surfing capital of England and a very popular holiday destination. Thousands of British people come here to Cornwall for their annual holiday. As you can see, the surf is good and the scenery is spectacular. Some of the countryside is still quite wild and there are caves and secret bays all along the coastline. These pretty villages were once the centre of a major fishing industry in Cornwall. But now tourism is the biggest industry in this area. During the summer, tourists fill the many local bed and breakfast hotels. There are also campsites, 
caravan parks and youth hostels. Many young people come here to Cornwall for the great surfing in places like Fistral Beach in Newquay. More people now surf in Britain than ever before. There's a nine-day surfing festival on Fistral Beach every year. There are many shops selling surfing equipment in the town. These surf shops sell everything the surfer needs. Surfing clothes are very fashionable. Brighton, on the south coast of England, is another favourite holiday resort. There's so much to do and see in this lively seaside town. At the end of the pier, there are cafes, theatres and a fairground. The view is great at sunset. Brighton Pavilion is another famous landmark. It is almost 200 years old. Holidays in the UK can also be active. There are plenty of places to walk or go horse riding. The Lake District in the northwest of England is particularly beautiful. The hills and valleys of Scotland are dramatic and wild. Or there's Blackpool, famous for its amazing street lights and huge fairgrounds. Thousands of young people go to Blackpool every year. In the last few years, more British people have been going abroad. Now, almost half the population take their holidays outside the UK. 10 million Britons go to Spain, France is the second most popular destination, and the USA is the third. So although many British people go abroad for their holidays, most Americans stay in the USA for theirs, and why not? They've got the sun in Florida and California, great music festivals in New Orleans, the beauty of the Rocky Mountains and the excitement of New York. What more could you want? Well, personally, I prefer the open spaces. Hello, is that the travel agent? I'd like to book a holiday in the USA, please. Yes, this summer, August. I'd like to go to the Grand Canyon. I normally like watching soaps on television. The sort of shows that I really like on television are comedy, action and suspense. I like to watch comedies on TV. I enjoy watching the news. Are you going shopping? We're going window shopping. You just look at things in the window. It's cheaper. It's a good way to find out where the best things are. What else do you do when you're not at school? Sometimes we go to the park, don't we? We play tennis or have a picnic. But only if the weather's good enough. I spend hours on the phone and I often read in my room. I don't read much apart from magazines, but I love going on the internet and emailing my friends. American kids love to talk. Socializing is a big part of a teenager's life. They get together at the mall, they talk on the phone, they hang out in places like this. Brad, uh, what sort of things do you do in your free time? Well, 
I don't have much free time. I have a part-time job. Me too. My parents give me some extra money on the side to hang out with friends and buy clothes, but it's not enough. Do you like the places you work at? It's okay. I mean, it's fast food. But um, there's some nice people. So what are you going to do now? Um, actually, we got a date, so see ya. See you guys later. How many hours a week do you spend playing computer games? During term time, not much. I have homework to do then. About an hour. An hour and a half. Do you use computers much at school? Yes. We use them for IT. You know, information technology. We also do our homework on the computers. Oh, no! Yes! Was the film good? Yes, it was really good. I'd seen it before, but it was still great. Do you go to the cinema a lot? About twice a month. It depends what's on. I'd like to go more often, but it's expensive. I normally watch DVDs. Every once in a while, I go out to the movies with my friends. I'd go and watch a film in the cinema if it had a good advert on television. I like action and comedy films. I like watching romance films. Not bad for a beginner. How long have you been playing? A couple of years. A long time ago, older people would come and just bowl with their families. Now it's a lot more common for kids to come and just have fun. Is bowling a sport or a hobby? I guess it depends on how good you are. For me, it's a hobby, but for some people, it's a sport. Some people play regularly and go to competitions. They even have special uniforms, you know, team colors. Take another shot. Right. Can we uh, do that bit again? What's your favourite music? Do you always listen to the same type of music? Do you buy mini CDs? I prefer listening to garage, R&B and hip-hop. I buy CDs whenever I have the money. I like listening to pop music and the odd bit of classical music. I often buy CDs maybe two or three times a month. I don't really listen to much music. I don't buy CDs very often. I like rock music, pop music, R&B and hip hop. I like to listen to pop. I like hip hop and R&B. I like listening to music in the pop charts. I like to listen to various types of music, especially pop music. The styles of music that I like are uh, heavy metal and punk. Hi, I'm at Bush Music Studios in West London. This is a fantastic place for musicians to rehearse. Today we're going to talk to some young musicians. Let's go and meet the first band. They're called Drip Feed. Drip Feed are an alternative rock band. 
They're originally from Glasgow, but now they live in London. They're taking a break from rehearsing at the moment, so I can ask them some questions. Hi Matt, how's the rehearsal session going? Yeah, it's going really well. We're rehearsing material for our next EP. How long have you been together? Me and Matt are brothers and we've been recording for around four years. Matt, which musicians have influenced you? Well, I'm a massive Jeff Buckley fan and I'm also a big admirer of Tom York of Radiohead. Jamie, do you write your own songs? Yes, I do. I started listening to other bands and this really inspired me to write my own material. Do you write the music first and then the lyrics or the other way around? It depends. Sometimes I get a tune in my head and sometimes I get the lyrics and fit the music around it. Thanks. I'll let you get back to your rehearsal. I'm going to leave Dripfeed to finish their rehearsal and go to meet a very different kind of band. Rap is one of the most popular types of music in the UK and USA today. Today I'm going to meet some young rappers who specialise in freestyle rapping. Let's go and find out some more about them. What exactly is freestyle rapping? Freestyle rapping is the ability to come up with the words as you're going along. Does one person do all of the singing? No. We usually take it in turns and go round in a circle. Who do you like listening to? At the moment, it's Nas, Jay-Z and Eminem. What other styles of music do you like listening to? Well, I like listening to rap and at the moment I listen to Garage. When did you first start rapping together? Sober and I had been rapping together for about a year, but as a group, we've only been rapping for a couple of months. Great. Can you do a number for us? Yeah, we'll do that now. It's a freestyle, baby, I'll show you something new. It's a freestyle, baby, with the Excalibur crew. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, Sober's truly the best. He's got a couple of things he wants to get off his chest. And the first thing, now I'm going to say I'm the best. I'm a freestyle baby with my six-pack chest. Either way, who's this? Who's that? It's me. The lyrical Don MC, that Sober MC. And now, oh my gosh, I ain't got nothing else to say. Push it on to that girl. What's her name, DK? What you gonna do, what you gonna say now It's DK freestyling anyhow I've got no idea what I'm about to rhyme So I'll give it back to you one more time Louise is an R&B singer and songwriter. She is studying music production at college in London. Hi Louise, I know you write your own music, but what sort of music do you listen to? The music I listen to is R&B, soul and jazz. Do you do live performances? Yes, I've done lots of live performances in London, as Little L, which is my stage name. You also produce your own beat tracks. Tell us about that. A uh, beat track is basically a backing track for a song. Here's one I made. Can you sing us one of your songs? Yes, of course I can. My song is called I Fought. Treat me like you do, cause you know that I'm his boo. All I did was love you, care for you I was there for you, never even said thank you And never played you, cos I realised this you You wasn't all about the You wasn't even good in
I have two favorite pieces of technology, uh, my computer and my CD player. My favorite piece of technology is my mobile phone. My favorite piece of technology is my mini disc player. My favorite piece of technology is the TV. The best thing that's ever been invented is probably the wheel. The best thing ever invented has to be the clock. The best thing ever invented was 24-hour music television. Hi. Machines are a really important part of our lives today. In tomorrow's world, they'll be even more important. What sort of things will machines be able to do in the future? I'm here today to meet someone who can help us to answer that question. His name's Professor Kevin Warwick, who works with robots in the cybernetics department at Reading University in England. Thanks for talking to us today, Professor. Can you tell us what sort of things you're working on at the moment? Well, one of the things we're working on at the moment is this small transmitter. When it's put inside a person, we can see where that person goes. Here you can see someone moving around the university. There's a small transmitter under the skin of their arm. It's easy for us to follow them wherever they go. No, I wouldn't put a transmitter under my skin. No, I would not put a transmitter in my arm. I think it would be quite useful for parents to keep track of their kids. It might be used to track where criminals are. I think a really good use for this technology would be for famous people to track them down to see where they are. I've heard you've got a robot hand here. Can you show that to us? Some time ago, I did an experiment. I put a chip in my arm. I then used this to connect my arm to the robot hand. And as I moved my hand, the robot hand moved in the same way. Wow! So this could be used with a very large robot arm, for example. That's right. One person could move their arm and the robot could lift a huge weight. Do you have to be next to the robot's hand? No. We tried the experiment over a very long distance. I went to the USA and we sent the signals back over the internet. So as I moved my hand, the robot hand moved back here, in Reading. You could use it for experiments in space or anywhere where it was difficult to get to. If you wanted to move very small things, because the human hand can make very small movements, the robot hand could do the same. A robot hand could be used for dangerous work or lifting heavy machinery. You could use the robot hand to go places you couldn't go, like an earthquake or a disaster. When you invent something, do you always know how it will be used in the future? No, not always. Sometimes people invent something and they don't really know what to do with it at first. It took quite a long time before people realised the importance of the telephone, for example. But today, we can't imagine living without one. I'd like to see something invented that could transport people from one place to another instantaneously. I'd like something that tidied my room. Something that did my homework. I'd like a fridge that automatically ordered food from the supermarket. I would like to see the invention of flying cars. I would like to see a time machine that could take me into the future. What great inventions would you like to see? If you could invent something yourself, what would it be? Thank you.